Hello Airsoft friends and welcome to this video today where I want to start it off with a round of applause for peer pressure. Yay! Hooray! Because today we're going to be unboxing a brand new rifle which arrived this morning. Yes, it is fresh out of the delivery man's hands and uh, hopefully it's all, you know, clean. <laughs> and there's a funny story behind how this rifle came into my possession. Essentially, I thought it was a good idea to do a live stream where me and the community could hang out on YouTube, which was actually really, really fun. But then it started delving into a conversation about which rifles are good and what I could recommend. And then all of a sudden, a gentleman linked a rifle, which I'd seen in a copy of Airsoft International, I think about a month or so ago, because there was a really interesting article about the rifle. I'd not really seen it before, and it was all about what upgrades to get for it to make it like really sick. And at the minute, I'm on like just a VSR high, you know? I had my cheapo VSR, 54 pounds, performed amazingly well. I've since then got my SSG 10, which I haven't been able to skirmish yet because of, you know, everything going on in the world. So I'm a little bit like, quite like some more. During lockdown, I have sorted out my SRS and I'm super excited to get that back in the field. I've put the longer barrel in, I've made the bolt pull super smooth. And I've also got a wasp piston somewhere to fit in there as well. So all three beautiful, lovely things, which should hopefully mean the rifle is going to be sick when I get it out in the field. But today's video isn't to talk about those things. Today's video is to talk about this new thing, which, uh, yeah. Very much thanks to a, a lovely chap called John Joe, who is one of my Patreons, so I love him for that. He uh, instigated the whole thing, and uh, yeah, so thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. As a little side note though, that live stream was absolutely sick. We had like 50 plus people in there the entire time, and uh, it was so cool just, you know, just chilling out with all you guys. So I wanna see if I can make that a weekly thing. I'm thinking at the minute, maybe Sunday. So yeah, make sure you get sub, make sure you got your notifications turned on because those streams are just banging because at the minute things like this happen, but hopefully that won't become an occurrence because I can't sustain that kind of thing. So without further ado, let's just crack this out and see what we've got. I do wanna chrono it and have a little play, put some sights on, um, but you know, because of the way the world is, there's only so much we can do at this point in time. But as soon as we are able to get out and do gameplays, then I definitely will do gameplays with it. I've got many rifle that I need to do gameplays with, so it's gonna be added to the list and will be done when it's its turn. I've also got pistols that need to be done. I've got two pistols that I've not used in the field yet. And yeah, God, the arsenal just keeps growing. Come to think of it, I've got a DMR and I've got another M4, which I've not used in the field yet. When you start playing airsoft, people don't really warn you that this is, you know, an issue. Maybe I should do a video to warn people about that with Airsoft. Anyway, let's just get the box down and open and see what's inside. If the title hasn't spoiled it for you there, it's the Action Army T10 Airsoft Sniper Rifle. It's in flat dark earth, which is similar to the colouring of my Crytac. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cheeky sniper rifle that is apparently really, really good. It was £225 at point of purchase. I purchased it from Skirm Shop UK, not to be confused with the sneaky, mean Skirm Shop NL people. And so far my experience with Action Army has been with their 50 round VSR magazines, of which this actually includes one in there, which is very good because usually sniper rifles have small magazines, so a 50 round mag is very nice to see. And also the AAP-1, which is like a fast, auto Luger type pistol, which uh, yeah, that's one of the riffs I haven't used in the field yet. So let's just crack this open, grab the riff out, see what we've got and uh, do some early tests. We have got an energy test report, which says it was at 0.77 joules. Yeah, that, that doesn't really sound that great. So we'll test that. The 50 round Action Army VSR magazine. And I've already got three others of those, which I ran with my first VSR. So that's quite handy. A mock magazine slash magazine holder, which you could put your magazines in like that and this will make more sense when I get the riff out and we put this together I think a nifty instruction manual which says that oh a nifty instruction manual which says that the gun has to be under 0.83 joules on 0.2s to follow the laws of importing oh that makes sense ah okay so because of the country origins of where this rifle is made it has to have a low FPS. That's probably why there was that article in Airsoft International explaining how to upgrade it all. God, it all makes so much sense now. We're definitely gonna have to be upgrading the rifle. And you may have noticed that the box is no longer on my lap. That's because I threw the manual onto the table and it accidentally hit my stop record button. So we fast forwarded into the future. But that's a good thing because that means that we have the rifle out already here and we don't have to faff around with the box anymore. So there's always a silver lining. And I must say that this rifle, it looks cool. <laughs> it's really nice, like it, it feels a bit odd because I kind of feel like my thumb 
wants to go in here somewhere as opposed to going on the top. But that's probably just because I'm used to either use, well, probably the L96 at the minute because there is the thumb hole more down uh, on the pistol grip area. But I'm sure I'll get used to that. No problem there at all. One thing that I found to be a bit curious, even though the aesthetic of it is really nice, but I feel like reloading this is going to be a, a, a fair bit of a faff because you've got your magazine in here, yeah? So if I want to get the magazine out, I just press that button and it flies out, which is cool. It doesn't really fly out. It falls out easily though, which is good because VSRs I find are notoriously difficult to take the mags out, which is a pain. But once you've got your mag out, you then, if you're using the magazines in your little secret little mag box thing, you need to take that out. You then need to put your rifle down. Let's pretend that was in there. You then need to pull your magazine out. You need to get your old magazine. You need to put your old magazine in there. You then need to put that back into the rift like that so you don't lose that. And then you need to take your new magazine and pop that into the rift like that. And then you're finally ready to go again, which is a bit of a faff. Like, don't get me wrong. I am all up for keeping magazines stored on rifles. I think it's just, you know, the best place to keep them. But if you've only got storage space for one spare magazine, even though they're 50 round magazines, I feel like you're still probably going to get through that amount of shots in a game. Like, uh, it's tricky to see. It depends how much you shoot, though, because if this is all of the BBs that you need for a match, then I guess it's okay. But I feel like you may want to have more than that. Although if I use my SRS adapter, generally I don't use more than like 70, 80. Maybe it's okay actually. Maybe I'm complaining about something which I don't need to complain about. It's something to keep an eye on though. If you only need to use one magazine spare, then perfect. So I guess we're just gonna have to get into the field and use it. If it's a super accurate rifle, then that's probably is gonna be enough shots for a uh, for a match. If it's a little bit inaccurate and you're gonna be sending a ton of BBs downrange, then you're probably gonna need some more, but we won't be able to judge that until we get out in the field. Please let me play airsoft again. So in terms of overall aesthetics, I am super happy with it. Let's go wide, let's go super wide actually. Boom, let's go, look at that. We've never been this wide before on this channel, but there we go. So here we have it. There is the full aesthetic of the rifle, and I must say, it looks really cool. I, I genuinely really, really enjoy it. Now, one of the big selling points about this rifle is it's all VSR internals. So from the bolt, all the hop unit, everything like that, it's all standard VSR. So every single VSR upgrade part should work in it, no problems at all. I guess upper receivers could potentially be an issue for it, but you know, every internally type thing. Let's do, let's see what it sounds like, okay? Because now we know the reason why it has to be low powered. I'm expecting this to sound like a proper, like toy, kind of naffy rifle. Let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> Where's my 54 pound? Oh, it's gone somewhere. My 54 pound sniper sounded so much better than that. Listen to that again. Oh, it's just a baby. Oh, but it is a really cool baby to be fair. Like checking it out, there is so much room for, there's modularity coming out of everywhere. So you've got like three bits, you can put plates onto there. This whole rail system on the side, you can put wherever you want. You've already got integrated quick detached spaces on there. You've got the same rail system on the side. You've got the same rail system on the bottom. You've got a sling mount already on there so you can move that. Coming to the back here, you've got a, there's a spinny bit on the, on the stock here. So that's gonna, I imagine, move your stock up and down or allow you to, to modify that. You've got your butt plate on there where you could probably put some sweets inside it, which is always good because sweets are nice when you're playing airsoft. If I unlock that, what does that unlock? I've unlocked something. What does that do? I've, I've locked it again. There's another QD point down there. There's QD there, there's QD there. Literally every single place you look, there is some form of modularity. And I quite like that. It feels comfortable. My thumb feels like it wants to go through there though because of the L96, because it's a pistol grip. It feels like it's half pistol and half VSR stock. Like my thumb wants to go through this wall. So that's gonna take a little bit of getting used to. But in terms of like grip, it is quite comfortable. That bolt pull is so easy. So, so, so easy. I mean, it's a 0.87 like dual rifle. Or let's see, let's do the test for ourselves and see what we get. There you go. There we go. Boom. So really the 2872 and the 286, that's only half a FPS, half a foot 
away from each other. And then the, the, two, the 290, that's a couple of FPS away. So, I mean, generally speaking, within three FPS of each other, why are you over there? Come back over here. Within three FPS of each other, that's, that's fine. I'm happy with that. I mean, it's a brand new rifle. I definitely want to take it apart and clean it as well. And uh, it's gonna need it's gonna need a new spring in there. Do I have any VSR springs? I think I sold all my VSR springs when I sold my rifle, so don't have any spare. That will have to be a future video, I think, where we upgrade this and uh, and give it a little play. But yeah, it was a surprise. I didn't realise it was gonna come um, so so low. But I guess the best thing about that is. Um, it's it's a it's gonna be like a out the box CQB rifle, so that's exciting because I have wanted to um to play with a Bolti in CQB, so chuck a little red dot on there, and then we're probably gonna be good to go. And as for this video, that's it. So thank you all very much for watching, and a special thank you to John Joe for your uh, your assistance in buying this rifle. I do love you. You're a good chap. Don't don't make any more recommendations though, because I'm scared that it's gonna. It's going to happen, so please just stop. <laughs> and a huge shout out to all of my lovely patrons. You are beautiful people. Thank you very much for your support and for, uh, yeah, just, just keeping the lights on and, and supporting the channel. It's amazing. Like, everything that's happening at the minute is so very humbling. And, yeah, I, I, I love the fact that you guys are loving the content and you're, you're enjoying it. So thank you all very much. And also, a nice thank you to Airsoftology for the shout out in your video today. I, uh, I, I watched that, I saw that, and uh, thank you everyone who also uh, recommended that he check out my channel. And, uh, yeah, it was awesome to see that. Thank you very much. It was, uh, yeah, very, very lovely. And that's it. So thank you all very much again for watching. Remember to call your hits and I'll see you in the next one.